this week, one of these three contestants will win the Jeopardy! $100,000 Tournament of Champions. Now entering the studio are the three finalists. A grad student from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Bruce Simmons. A material scientist from Phoenix, Arizona, Leszek Pavlovich. And a writer from Studio City, California, Jerome Verrett. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first of the two games in our final match. Jerome, you have a lot of supporters out there, and they reacted immediately to uh, your little grimaces as you came out. I'm sure you feel confident oh, on the... Sure. What's that? Oh, sure. Oh, sure, he does. On the subject of confidence, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at uh, three finalists in this year's Tournament of Champions who are among the very best players we've ever had on our program. As a threesome, they have earned already close to a quarter million dollars. Who is going to wind up picking up an additional 100000 tomorrow? We'll find out. Jerome, Leszek, and Bruce, good luck. Here we go. The first round. The Jeopardy round. The easier round. The fun round. One daily double in one of these categories. New York State, pop music, business and industry, the Ming Dynasty, word origins, and finally, nicknames. Jerome, you are the high scorer in this threesome in the semifinals, and so you select first. Okay, Ming Dynasty, please, for 100. The folding type of this cooling device became accepted in China during the Ming Dynasty. Leszek. What is a fan? Right. Uh, business and industry for 100. Mamma Mia, since purchasing Ronzoni, this number one U.S. chocolate maker has become number two in pasta. Jerome. What is Hershey's? Yes. Um, Ming Dynasty for 200, please. Its use as a defensive barrier fell with the fall of the Ming Dynasty, and it fell into disrepair. Jerome. What is the Great Wall? Right. Ming for 300. In 1421, the Emperor Yung Lo got gung ho and moved the capital to this city where he'd built an imperial palace. Jerome. What is Beijing? Beijing or Peking, yes. Uh, Ming Dynasty for 400. A house pet during the Ming Dynasty was this Lhasa Apso relative, whose name is Chinese for lion. Jerome. What is a Shih Tzu or Shih Tzu? Yes. Uh, Ming Dynasty for 500. In 1368, the Ming Dynasty replaced this one, founded by Kublai Khan. Bruce. What is the Yuan Dynasty? The Yuan or the Mongol Dynasty, correct. Let's to go to word origins for 100. Answer. The name of this small metal finger cap is derived from an old English word for thumb. Leszek. What is a thimble? Thimble, right. Business and industry for 200. Like a good neighbor, this company has been selling folks insurance since 1922. Bruce. What's, uh, State Farm? Yes. <laughs> word origins for 200. Answer. The name of this military horn comes from the Latin for young ox, since the first ones were ox horns. Leszek. What is a bugle? Bugle, right. Uh, business and industry for 300. In 1990, to boost U.S. sales, this Korean auto company introduced its sporty scoop. Leszek. What is Hyundai? Yes. Business and industry for 400. Answer there, the Daily Double. The only one in the round, and it will undoubtedly break a tie for second place. Uh, let's do all of it. All of it, a true Daily Double that will put you in first place if you are right on this clue. A leading maker of athletic shoes... This company was named for a swift antelope. What is Reebok? Reebok, right. You're in the lead. Let's select again. Uh, business and industry for 500. In July 1992, this last U.S. consumer typewriter company announced it's moving its factory to Mexico. Bruce? What's Remington? No. Jerome? What's Smith Corona? Smith Corona, yes. You're... That gives you $500 more, taking you into the lead with $1,500. You have $100 more than Leszek. Bruce on the board with... $200, and we're going to take our first break. We'll be back to complete the round right after this. All right, gentlemen, let's complete the round. Jerome, you gave me the last correct question. Select again. All right, Alex. Word orders for 300, please. Answer. From Arabic for old man, it's the leader of an Arab family, tribe, or village. Jerome. Was Muftar? No. Leszek or Bruce? 
Jerome realizes that he said the wrong thing. He should have said shake. Hey. Yes, shake. Word origins for 400, please. Answer. This mammal's name comes from the corruption of a French phrase, which meant thorny pig. Jerome. What's a porcupine? Correct. A word origins for 500. This term for a person who bowls is derived from the German word for bowling pin. Jerome. What's a kegler? Kegler, right. Uh, pop music for 100. Answer. Photograph and Your 16 made him the only ex-Beatle to have two consecutive songs reach number one in the United States. Leshik. Who's Ringo Starr? Correct. Pop music for 200. This Stones hit begins, It is the evening of the day. I sit and watch the children play. Bruce. What is As Time Goes By? No. Jerome or Leshik? The correct response is As Tears oh. Go By. As tears go by. Leshik back to you as time goes by is from that famous yeah. film. Leshik, pick Pop again. music for 300. Answer. But don't forget who's taking you home and in whose arms you're going to be. So, darling, save this. Jerome. What's the last dance for me? Right. Pop music for 400. This rock star of the 50s and 60s hit the charts again in the 70s with the Stone Canyon Band. Stone Canyon here in the Los Angeles area. Who is Ricky Nelson? Jerome, back pop music here. for five. This 1961 Lawrence Welk pop hit takes its title from the name of a city in India and features a harpsichord. <laughs> what is Calcutta? Calcutta. Jerome, pick again. New York State for 100. In 1991, New York ranked second to Washington in the production of this crop, its leading fruit. Bruce. What's the apple? Right. New York State for 200. Slide Mountain is the highest peak in this range known for its resort hotels. Jerome. What are the Catskills? Yes. New York State for 300. The longest river wholly within the state. It's been called the Rhine of America. Jerome. What's the Hudson? Yes. New York State for 400. This Republican governor served 14 years, longer than any man since statehood. Leshik. It was Nelson Rockefeller. Yes. New York State for 500. New York State is bordered by these two great lakes. Leshik. What are Erie and Ontario? Correct. Nicknames for 100. Short clue. The Peanut President. Jerome. Who's Carter? Correct. Nicknames for 200. No Hit Nolan. Leshik. Who's Nolan Ryan? Right. Nicknames for 300. First Lady of the American Stage. Bruce. Who's Helen Hayes? Yes. Nicknames for 400. The Steel King. Leshik. Who's Carnegie? Yes. Nicknames for 500. Mother of the Civil Rights Movement. Jerome. Oh, who is... Rosa Parks. Correct, for $500 more, and that takes you to $3,500. you are in the lead all by yourself. Leshik has $3,000. Bruce on the board with $400. Gentlemen, I noticed a few moments ago when we went into our first commercial break that all three of you heaved this massive <laughs> sigh of relief. Am I correct in assuming that uh, all three of you are suffering from a case of nerves uh, at this late stage? Bruce, uh, do you feel that way? Are you relaxed? Oh, I'm totally relaxed. <laughs> It's not that bad, but uh, I do feel a little tension. These are some fine competitors I'm up against, so. All right. Leshik, if you, I'm sure you've been a fan of Jeopardy for a number of years, and you probably thought about some of the other champions we've had on the program. If you had your druthers, is there any one of our previous champions whom you would not have liked to have uh, encountered in a tournament of champions? I think, uh, was it Bob Blake, who was the champion a few years ago, was very, very good. I would not have wanted to go the against him. The actuary from Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, he was quiet. He was a lot like uh, Robert, who played in uh, yesterday's semifinal. Very quiet Canadian who kept coming up with the correct response. Made it very difficult. Jerome, what about you? Uh, are you nervous? Of course. Yeah? Of course. Why? Is it the money, or is it the no. fact that you've gotten to the championship, and now it's all or nothing? Not really. It's just, it's neither. It's, it's just that these are very good competitors, and it makes the game more exciting. Is and that also higher adrenaline level, I guess. Uh, is, it, is your ego involved at all, do you think? I hope not. No? Because I might be very disappointed at the end of the day. Well, see, I don't agree with that, because I think ego is very important for contestants on Jeopardy. You guys are here because you think you're bright, otherwise you wouldn't have tried out for the program. And it's worked for you so far, you have demonstrated your skills, and you should feel proud of what you've accomplished. You're here, and you've got a shot at $100,000, and an important round, the double Jeopardy round, is coming up right after this. Yeah, you guys deserve it. During the commercial break, a thought occurred to me regarding what I was saying a few moments ago to these three very bright players, and it is a line from the Zero Mostel Gene Wilder film, The Producers, when he looks out the window and he looks at that uh, Ro Rolls Royce down on the street and he says, yeah, that's it, when you've got it, flaunt it.
There's nothing wrong with that. All right, gentlemen, double jeopardy coming up now. An important round, two daily doubles for you in this one. Here we go. Here are the categories. Chemistry. Explorers. Mountains. Literary relatives. Theater. And finally, a whole category devoted to popes named Gregory. Bruce, you go first. Well, I'd be a fool if I didn't go to theater for 200. Answer. The Great Dionysia was this ancient civilization's most important drama festival. Bruce. What's Greece? Right. Theater for 400. Strindberg set Miss Julie in the kitchen of a manor house in this, his native country. Bruce. What's Sweden? Right. Theater for 600. This acting teacher was the artistic director of New York City's Actors Studio from 1948 until 1982, the year he died. Bruce. Who's Strasbourg? Right. Theater for 800. The answer there, the Daily Double. Well, you were right to start with that category. You've gotten them all correct so far, and you have a shot at doubling your 1600. All of it. Let's go for it. All right. That'll put you in second place if you are right on this clue. Six characters in search of an author was written in this language. What's Italian? You are correct. Girandello was the author. And we've got ourselves quite a contest. Select again, Bruce. Theater for a thousand. The William Inge play in which Lola dreams that her little white puppy is never coming back. Jerome. Who's come back, little Sheba? You're right for a thousand dollars. Pope's name Gregory for two hundred. Gregory the First's name lives on in this musical form. Leshik. Was Gregorian chant? Correct. Uh, chemistry for two hundred. The triple point is the temperature and pressure at which these three phases of a substance coexist. Leshik. What a solid, liquid, and gas. Right. Uh, chemistry for four hundred. This is the chemical formula of dry ice. Bruce. What's CO2? Yes. Chemistry for 600. Neoprene, a synthetic form of this material, is more resistant to oil than the natural type. Bruce. What's rubber? Right. Chemistry for 800. This acid is the electrolyte in a lead acid battery. Leshik. What is sulfuric acid? Yes. Chemistry for 1,000. It's the type of alcohol found in alcoholic beverages. Bruce. What's ethyl alcohol? Ethyl alcohol, right. Uh, Pope's name Gregory for 400. Gregory XIII is famous for his revision of this in 1582. Bruce. What's the calendar? Right. Pope's name Gregory for 600. Not even a member of the priesthood, Gregory X was on one of these with Edward I when elected. Jerome. It's a crusade. Crusade is right. Pope's name Gregory for 800. In September 1376, Gregory XI moved the papacy from this city back to Rome. Leszek. Was Avignon. Yes. Explorers for 200. Top of that column, John Speak was the first European to reach this lake and identify it as the source of the Nile. Bruce. What's Lake Victoria? Right. Pope's name Gregory for a thousand. Gregory XV canonized Teresa of Avila and this man of Loyola, among others. Jerome. Who's Ignatius? Ignatius is good for a thousand. Explores for 400. A year after his death, one of his ships completed the first around the world voyage. Bruce. Who's Magellan? Right. Explorers for 600. U.S. explorer Charles Wilkes was the first to designate this a continent and has a land there named for him. Leszek. What is Antarctica? Right. Antarctica. Uh, explorers for 800. In 1768, he led an expedition to Tahiti where astronomers studied the transit of Venus across the sun. L Jerome. Who's Cook? Right. Explorers for 1,000. In 1542, after searching for the seven golden cities of Cibola, he returned to Mexico disappointed. Leszek. Who's Coronado? Right. Mountains for 200. This country's highest mountain is Risi Peak, about 60 miles south of Krakow. Bruce. What's Poland? Right. Mountains for 800. 800. Lord Byron called this peak on the French-Italian border the monarch of mountains. Leszek. Was Mont Blanc? Correct. Mountains for 1,000. Among the ranges in this Central American country are the Tabasara, San Blas, and Darien Mountains. Bruce. What's Panama? Yes. Literary relatives for 800. And so there, Lawrence Hausman, who wrote the play Victoria Regina, was this poet's brother. Leszek. Who's A.E. Hausman. Correct. Literary relatives for 1,000. The answer there, the other daily double. Oh. Oh, it. it's tough. You've got the lead, Leszek. And I'll bet 1,500. Well, 1,500. Here comes the clue in literary relatives. This Joseph Andrews author wrote a preface to his sister Sarah's novel, The Adventures of David Simple. Who's Fielding? Henry Fielding, correct. <laughs> Taking you to 9,700. We have five clues left. Uh, mountains for 400. Answer. 
Not only does Alaska have this, the highest U.S. peak, it has the next 15 tallest, too. Bruce. What's Mount McKinley? Right. Mountains for 600. In 1980, two Japanese climbers became the first to scale it from the north. Jerome. What's K2? No. Leshek. What is Everest? Right. Uh, literary relatives for 200. This Fahrenheit 451 author is descended from a woman who was tried for witchcraft in Salem. Bruce? Who's Vonnegut? No. Oh. Jerome. Oh. Who's Bradbury? Ray Sister. Bradbury, right. Literary relatives for 400. Literary sisters whose elder sisters, Maria and Elizabeth, died at ages 11 and 10, respectively. Jerome. Or Emily and Charlotte Bronte? Right. And or the Bronte sisters, yes. And literary relatives for 600. His first book, Betty Zane, was a historical novel about one of his ancestors. Bruce. So Zane Gray. Zane Gray is correct, and that takes you to 8,200. Look at those scores, folks. Whoa. Wow. This is television's only trading floor where every day the individuals who control the finances of America, the women, of course, come to make deals. And what's more... These people, dressed as they are, come from all over the United States to make deals. Here in the marketplace of America, let's make a deal. And now, here's America's top trader, TV's big dealer, Monty Hall. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's nice to have you all here. Welcome to the show. How are you? Good, good. You all look marvelous, simply wonderful. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do first of all. We're going to uh, take a look at Sherry Field right over here. And, uh, my, did you go to a great expense to make this sign for me, Sherry? Uh... I tear my heart out for a deal with you. Oh, and I get it. You tore all the hearts out of the deck. Isn't that interesting? Stand right up, Sherry Field. Tear off. Well, there's a, she's got a deck of cars with 39 cars left somewhere. Uh, maybe two decks of cars with them. What's the matter, dear? Nervous. Well, of course, everybody's nervous on the show. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you trade for the box Jay Stewart's are bringing down right now. Is that a deal? Yeah. Okay, you own what's in the box. Now I'm going to let you know a little secret about this box. Inside, I wouldn't tell this to anybody, just you, dear. Would you stop biting the rattle? <laughs> right now, I'm going to tell you that inside this box, there are not one, two, three, or four, but seven. Seven items. Count them. Seven. Now, what could those seven items be on Let's Make a Deal? Hundred dollar bills. How about thousand dollar bills? Could be that, too. You never know. Or seven rolling pins. That's okay. I don't care. One for each day of the week? I just oh. thought of that seven. Isn't that cute? That's not too clever. <laughs> All right. But seven items, and I'll buy them back from you. For the amount of money that you just mentioned a few moments ago, $100 a piece, $700. Now, do you want the uh, seven items or do you want the $700? She's going to share it. Here you are, Sheriff. $700. Now, show her what she turned down. The seven items are one dog and six cans of dog food. You just got two puppies in the pound? You're a good girl. Take good care of them. Um, now, now I'm going to tell you something. This happens to be a very rare breed of dog that you just turned down. It's a French mongrel. You know, it's spelled Z-O-N-Q-U-E. This mongrel is called a zonke. Zonke. Uh, but uh, you have not uh, gone for him, so we will tell you you also missed out on the six cans of food. Zonke you very much. Along with a puppy go six cans of rival dog food, Snoopy's Choice. Treat your dog to one of Snoopy's favorites, Rival. It doesn't look like dog food. That's what we have, and you're very happy with what you got, and I got a little kiss for my effort, so thank you. And now, would you stand up, young lady? Thank you. No, no, no. No, you can't. There's one rule I make. You can't, no kissing before the deal. After the deal, that's different. What's the matter, dear? Well, I do. What do you do? Just stand there and don't scream. As a good girl. Are you a real cheerleader, a baton twirler and all that? I'm not really one of these. No. But in that case, do you mind if I take it away from you because you may twirl it right into my oh, eye? I don't mind. No, no, I do if it goes in my eye, you see. I'm very sensitive to things like that. Your name is Marty? Yes. Marty Sanford? 
All right, Marty, what have I got for you? I have, take a look, right over there, there's a billboard which takes and spells out Sue B. Honey J. $50 with a Sue B. Super for spreading, sweetening, topping, baking, and cooking. Pure old-fashioned goodness in every drop of Sue B. Honey. And you won't believe this, but there are seven items behind that wall. Now, we had a dog and six cans of food over there. I don't know what the seven items back there are, but you can have them for the same deal, the same offer I just made a few moments ago to Sherry Field. That is $100 a piece for the seven items. That's 700 bucks. I'll pay you right now for the honey and what's behind it. What do you want to do? What do I do? What do I do? You tell me. I don't tell you. I the money. You'll take the $700. Okay. All right. Okay, my dear. All right. Now, there you are. Seven... You never seen it? Well, that, there it is. See? The $100 bills have Jay Stewart's picture on it. Oh. And the $500 has my picture on it. Oh, that that's nice? the one I want. That's the one you want. You've got $700 worth. And what were the beautiful sweet things behind the sweet honey? But you could have had seven appliances. Seven appliances. That's right. A complete hot point kitchen, including the no frost side-by-side -side refrigerator freezer with exclusive through-the-door exterior ice server. And the dishwasher. A trash compactor, a high-low range, automatic washer and electric dryer, plus the Heritage Room Air Conditioner with three-speed operation. All seven from Hot Point. The seven appliances sell for $2,459.65. With the honey, the sweet deal was valued at $2,509.65. Now you can taste it. Thank you, Marty Sanford, Sherry Field, for making our first deal with us. Now, watch this. In just a few moments, we're going to take a $1 bill and turn it like magic into something around five grand. Right after this. <laughs> All righty. Now, I need a married couple here somewhere, if we have any. Uh, which one? Oh, you're pointing at him, that he's married. Oh, he's married to her. Well, that's very nice of you to point it out to me. All right. So she pointed you two out, and she's right. You're both named Monica. Would you stand up, please? That's uh, Ron Monica, Cheryl Monica, and you come from Santa Monica. No. <laughs> but this is not Monica, it's Monica. Oh, let me see, Monty's Melodies. Does it really play music? Listen. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. Now, Cheryl and Ron, uh, I am going to have you look for a bucks worth of merchandise and if you can find it for me why i'll let you trade it in for this very beautiful automobile sporty car pontiac's grand am foreign intrigue yankee ingenuity style prestige quick handling a true road car from pontiac of course and it sells for four thousand three hundred forty three dollars and fifty cents but we're adding tax and license air conditioning and more extras so that it's worth five And this is my bandmate. I'm Joe, and I'm a personal trainer. I'm Nikki, and I'm a massage therapist, and this is my best friend. I'm Alita, and I own my own bookstore. Hi, I'm Chuck. Today we're playing for $10,000, so let's play lingo. I want to welcome all of our players here today and uh, wish you good luck and also welcome Shandy, our co-host. And uh, you know, when I'm traveling around the country, everybody, every place I go always asks me how you are and they always want to know if you're as pretty off camera as you are on camera. And what do you tell them? I tell them no, but that's beside the point. I, <laughs> no, Chuck, I, you probably working on them guns. Yeah, I know. Get you backstage. So, oh, and by the way, which reminds me, I want to say a very special hello to Emily in the hill country of Texas because she's just a sweetie and she watches us every day. Emily's 10. Okay. Well, hello, Emily. Hey, if you're a Lingo fan, by the way, like Emily out there, there are two ways to get into the game. You can play along with this show right now and every time Lingo airs. Uh, you can also be a part of the online Lingo tournament where for a small fee you can compete for cash prizes and a chance to be a contestant in a future episode of Lingo. Just log on to gsn.com slash lingo for complete details. They'll all be there. You'll see it. Time to start. We're ready to go now. You know how to play the game. Dan and Joe won the toss backstage. They'll be going first, and Shandy's going to show them their first board. And I do. Here you go, guys. Covering ten numbers. And for the ladies. Good board. Good board. Good board. Good board. A good board. Good board. You have no idea yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Dan and Joe, you're up first. Here's your first puzzle. 
Hey boys, let's begin with an S. Sheer, S-H-E-A-R. I'm gonna go with Sours, S-O-U-R-S. R drops in or out of place. Short, S-H-O-R-T. Maybe. Sport, S-P-O-R-T. That's it. All right. Nicely done. All right, guys, reach in and get a couple of lingo balls. All right. Five. Okay, Ooh, Joe pulls the dreaded stopper. Well, that's okay. 25 to nothing. Uh, Nikki and Alita, you are up. Okay, ladies, you have a P. I'm going to go with punch, P-U-N-C-H. And drops in. Um, I'm going to go with uh, puny, P-U-N-N-Y. Sorry, spelled that way is not a word. Dan, Joe, over to you, and you get a bonus letter. Here it comes. Panic. P-A-N-I-C. Um, panty. P-A-N-T-Y. <laughs> why do I feel like that could be our <laughs> I don't know why. I just said, you know, just these guys, when they write these, they're going for panties. I know that's what they're doing. Okay. All right. Reach in and get you a couple of lingo balls. All right. That word sounds so macho coming out of a man. Panty. 65. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Joe. 17. Okay, up. All right, 50 nothing with Dan and Joe ahead, and we're going to take a break. Come back, more lingo right after this. Stay with you. All right, welcome back to lingo. Going to find out a little bit more about our players, starting off with uh, well, Dan, isn't it? Right. Yes, Hi, Dan. Nice I would recognize you, you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more about yourself. Uh, Chuck, I'm actually a pretty extensive traveler. Uh, yeah, I've traveled you? to every continent in the world, save Antarctica, and I actually lived in Madagascar for two months. And what was your favorite place? Madagascar, I would say. Why? Uh, just the people are some of the most interesting, warm people in the world. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to have you here. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Joe. How you doing? How are you? I'm great. Uh, you and I are actually alums of the same fraternity. And that would be? Alpha Kappa Lambda. <laughs> How do you figure that? That's what I was told. That's Somebody what they said. lied like a rug to you. You're kidding me. <laughs> no, I'm not a, a member of any fraternity. Uh, except there's a couple of guys back in Kentucky that, nah, that's another story. Though. But anyway, it's nice to have you here, nice Joe. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck to you today. Hi, Nikki. Hi. Hey, sweetie. Hey, Great. Tell me about yourself. Um, I'm originally from Nashville. How are you? I lived in Nashville. Oh, really? I did, Hendersonville. Well, Wow, I stayed out in Hermitage where it's like home of beautiful. the Opry yeah. off the lakes and things like yeah. that. So we always went boating and everything. And it's so. beautiful there. I love it. Oh, yeah. great. <laughs> I guess that's all the time we have. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alita. Hi. How are you doing, sweetie? Good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Tell me too. about yourself. Well, I'm from New Haven, Connecticut, huh? land of the Yaley. I didn't go to Yale, but, <laughs> you know. You could have. Yeah, I probably could have. Yeah. My mom always told me, you know, you should apply to Yale. And I said, what, for a job? Because I, I wasn't trying to get in there. You would have been great there. at Yale. You've been a great Yaley. Yeah, it's nice to have you all here. Thank yeah. you. Hey, listen, uh, Dan and Joe are going to be in control, and we're going to give you a next puzzle. Here it comes. Okay, guys, try it with an N. Nears, N-E-A-R-S. I'm going to go with nouns, N-O-U-N-S. O and an S drop in, E out of place. Noses, N-O-S-E-S. -S. Oh, look at that, boy. You jumped all over that one, didn't you? A couple more lingo balls. All right. Looking for a 1 or a 13, Come Dan? 13. Ah, 57. I thought you had it. Don't do that to me, Dan. <laughs> 61 will also give you lingo. 37. Uh, you're so enthusiastic, I swear I think you're on it and you're not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Score is 75 to 0. Dan and Joe still ahead, still in control. Back to the board. All right, boys. Try a D. Yes. Well, I'll say Deers. D E A R S. Deja vu. <laughs> All over again. Uh, devil. D E V I L. And Denim. D E N I M. Quickly. Oh. 
Nikki, Alita, bonus letter coming in. Okay, we're going to uh, debit, D-E-B-I-T. Got to be it. <laughs> Tell me it's nice. Yeah, 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 you got to be it. Good job. Come on, yeah. let's get a couple of lingo balls. Get ready to match the stars from Welcome Back, Carter, Ron Palillo, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Elaine Joyce, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Flay as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 77. And now, here's the star of Match Game 77, Gene Raymond. Johnny Olson and friends, handle with care. How is everybody over here today? Good, great, great. Great. Fine. good. Shall we have a go at it? Yep. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's welcome Christy Piper and Kathy Christie. <laughs> Christy Piper is a current champ. She's won a lot of money. She won the big one last time, so she has a total of six thousand three hundred dollars. Yes. <laughs> Very good. And she's being challenged by Kathy Christie here, who's had both of her questions and hasn't matched one celebrity. So that means... Oh, I tried. <laughs> Christy Piper has to match one person to win her fourth game. We'll see what happens here right after we see Bob Fitz. Now we shall carry on here and see what happens. This is the final question of this round. Christy, remember, all you have to do is match one to win. Mrs. Bowl said... How do you spell it? B-O-W-L. Mrs. Bowl said... It's not so great being married to the tidy bowl man. Every morning I wake up feeling blank. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Every morning I wake up feeling. It's not so great. No, okay, what did you? Yes, and that's what the lady said. It's not so great. Well, wouldn't you married. like to be married to a man that had a boat? <laughs> <laughs> Minus one. <laughs> Talk about A-bomb. Okay, three, four people are ready, and uh, one, the fifth is writing. Now we'll see what Christy Piper has on her mind. Ready over there? Stick it in the slot. Mrs. Bowl said, it's not so great being married to the tidy bowl man. Every morning I wake up feeling blank. Flushed. Yeah. Flushed. <laughs> Flushed. Well, what I didn't think... Answer, I didn't think she was that old. I didn't think you start getting those hot flushes until later in life then. Flashes. Oh, flashes, <laughs> yes. Flashes, something. Feeling blue. Blue! <laughs> Feeling blue is the Feeling terrific blue. answer. What have you got there? Am I, Am I blue? Blue, 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 blue. In the yeah. Godfather, part three. <laughs> part three, is this? I'm up to now. They said, you remember what happened to your brother Louie? Yeah. <laughs> He's in the East River. We flushed him. That wins the game. Spot. It's your fourth game, and Kathy Christie will have some gifts coming her way. Thank you very they much. will be arriving in LaGrange, Illinois, Thank in you. April Bye -bye. 1982. Thank you. Goodbye, my dear. <laughs> Here is Christie Piper, fourth time. She's got $6,400, and now she's going to try for another 5000 or more. Let's see how she does. Not too long ago, Christie, we polled the studio audience in this very room. Nice bunch of people like these we've got here today. We said, you write down your best answer to this. Blank pains. Remember, if you match the answer they gave us, most often you get $500. For matching their second most popular answer, you get $250. And for the third, you get $100. And sing out. Richard. What I'm going through, growing pains. Growing pains. You're still growing. Right. In every way. Thank you. <laughs> Elaine. Labor pains. Yeah. Labor pains. Did you hear all those men cheering out there? The men like are cheering? Know. Really? <laughs> Fanny. Well, my gosh. Wait a minute. The night may come to I have something. I have something. I have something. Well, just in case. <laughs> just 
something? Oh, Brett's going to become a citizen next week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm going to say <laughs> aches and pains. Yeah. Aches and pains, growing pains, and labor pains are the three, Christy. <clears throat> Excuse me, do you want one of those or have you got one of your own? I think labor pains. Labor pains. Now we want labor pains. <laughs> Man, no, I guess we don't. Now we want Lamaz. Is that absence of pain there? No, anyway, let's, uh, may we see the $100 response of you, please. Growing pains is Richard's answer, right? Okay. We're looking for labor pains. May we see the $250 response? Labor pains, you got it. Another 250 for you. What do you think's on top? Aches and pains. You think so? Hunger pains. Hunger pains. Hunger pains. Gas pains, get out, will you? <laughs> I told you not to eat the cabbage. <laughs> By the coleslaw? Window pains! Oh, yes! Very good, Fanny. All right, slide it. Aches and pains. Very good, Fanny had it all along. All right. Now, Christy, you're going to play for ten times the amount you just won, or $2,500. Remember, you have to match one exactly to collect. Richard. All right, good luck to you, Christy. Here it is worth $2,500. And Richard, if you're ready, this is it. Roger blank. Roger blank. Christy, give us the answer that Richard has written on the card, and we give you $2,500. Roger. Hmm. Dodger. Roger Dodger. Hmm. Roger Dodger, you old codger. I'm a major too. That's an old joke there. She says, Roger Dodger will match you. What do you say, Richard? Roger Moore. Roger Moore. <laughs> yes. Did you think, I couldn't think did you of his have name. him in your mind? Yes. Well, you should have described him to oh. us and it might have come to you just by talking about it. Roger Moore, 007. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, Christy, you're going to meet another player right now. So let's welcome Paul Smith. Here we go. Now, we welcome you, sir. Thank you. And ask you to tell us a little bit about Paul Smith. Dapper-looking fellow, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. Handsome <laughs> fellow. Well-dressed. Uh, totally coordinated. Notice the way everything blends together there. Trying to keep up with you. Oh, That's thank all. you. Where are you from, Paul? From Holland, originally. I from was, Holland? Yes, I was born in... musically a number of them are sitting in our audience right now and they don't know who's going to be called i'm looking for a receptionist from mesa arizona near phoenix shirley wooten are you ready all right i'm also looking for an educational psychologist native of new haven connecticut dr west ford hey doc how are you are you ready you are a receptionist from Mason here, Phoenix. And doctor, you are near New Haven, Connecticut, right originally? Originally. originally. All right, we're going to play a little game called Melody Roulette. Ready? Ready? Come on, right over here. All right, Shirley and Dr. West, the Melody Roulette works like this. We play a maximum of seven tunes, and the winner gets ten points. We spin the wheel one time and one time only to see how much money we're playing for. And it could be as much as $2,000. Here we go. Let it go.
Double, $750, $1,500 on the line right here in Melody Roulette. Seven tunes. Get ready, both of you. Listen carefully and name that tune. Be a You got it. Be a clown. You scored one tune. All right, it's one to nothing. Six to go. Listen again. Name that tune. Wow, that's right. You have two. Okay, Doc, you're a little behind here. However, there's still plenty of tunes. Two to nothing is the score. We're playing for $1,500. And Melody Roulette, listen and name that tune. Not right. It's close. That's in the song. It's called The Sloop John B. The oh, Sloop okay. John B. All right, still two to nothing. We have four tunes to go. You can still do it easily, Doctor. Listen again. Name that tune. Sure. I got stealth the jingle, 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 jingle. Jingle, jingle, jingle is all we need. You said the words, the magic words. Jingle, jangle, jingle. Your head three to nothing, Shirley, and Doctor, there's three remaining. Get all three. It's been done. You can tie this up. We go to a tiebreaker. One more for you, Shirley, and you've won $1,500. Big tune. Listen and name that tune. points. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. How's that? Wow. All right. Fifteen hundred dollars and you have the lead. But Doc, you can tie it right up. We got Tom, Tommy Oliver, two Tommy's coming up. We're ten points and Dr. West can tie the whole thing up. Don't go away. Right? Some of our departing contestants will receive the following. Mazzola No Stick, the light spray that takes the fat out of frying. Save calories and make cleanup easy with Mazzola No Stick. Ta-da! Announcing new fitting pretty pantyhose with six comfortable queen sizes and two clingy petite sizes. Try new fitting pretty today. Welcome back to Name That Tune. What a start. $1,500 in your purse, and, and you're in the lead, Shirley. But, Dr. West, you can catch up right here because uh, Tune Topic is worth 10 points. Shirley, where did you get that musical knowledge? I wish I could say I can read music, but I can't. I just have acquired it over the years. I listen to music all the time, radio. Sure, boy, you sure can hear it. You know, and that's a knack to hear the okay. tune and remember the name of the tune. That's yes. the key. Dr. West, we call you Dr. West. What kind of a doctor are you? Uh, clinical in educational and clinical psychology. So you're teaching uh, clinical psychology. Right, I'm at the faculty of California School of, uh, of um, Psychology. Whatever school that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the old, the old school place, whatever that is. Uh, oh, that's great, Doctor. Well, you've you got a tough competitor here, so here's, right. your, here's your chance to catch up. We're going to play Tommy Oliver's tune topics. It's worth 10 points. Let's see what Tommy and the band have come up with today. Here we go. We have shady ladies. We have wet bodies. We have wishful thinking, play with me, and love affairs. Let's see what comes up. My goodness. Wishful thinking means all the tunes you'll be asked to name will have wish in the title. We're thinking wishing songs now. And we're going to play a maximum of five tunes. The winner gets ten points and a very nice prize. Shirley, Dr. West, stand by, listen carefully, think wish, and name that tune. Yes, West. When you wish upon a star. That's right. Now you got it. There's one. One for the doctor, none for Shirley, but four more to go. And tune topics, listen again, think wish, name that tune. Wishing, hoping, and thinking. Yeah. yeah, wishing and hoping is enough. Thinking was what you were doing to get the name of that too. All right, two for you. One more, Doctor, and you have won the ten points. This is all tied up. Listen and name that tune. I wish you bluebirds. Not I wish right. you I'm sorry, Doctor. I, I, 
I wish you love. That's it. You got it. And you have won it. You won two topics. I wish you bloopers is one of the things, but the title is I wish you love. You got ten points. It's all tied up. Doctor, see what you want right up there. Ah, uh, color television. Or a service merchandise gift certificate. Famous brand name items. Select from our 500-page catalog to redeem at one of our showrooms. Furnished by Service Merchandise. Well, it's all tied up. 10 to 10, and we'll be back with bid and oath for 20 to decide who's going to go on to the Golden Medley right after this. Don't go away, because we're coming right back. Some of our departing contestants will receive the following. Reese's naturally flavored peanut butter chips for great peanut butter taste and all kinds of cookies and brownies. Delicious Reese's peanut butter chip made from real peanuts. Choose liquid or crystal vanish. Both not only clean, they disinfect. Remember, vanish disinfects. Lots of products don't. Welcome back to Name That Tune. It's all tied up. Shirley, you have 10 points. West, you have 10 points. This is it. Bitter Note is worth 20. Whoever wins Bitter Note is going to go on to the Golden Medley and have a chance to go to our tournament for $100,000 cash and prizes. Shirley, do you have anybody special in the audience rooting for you today? Yes, I do. I have my husband and my two children, Jeff and Laura. Where are they? Right in the front. Oh, there they are. Hi, guys. Yes. Yeah. And I know family is, you know, family is rooting for you, but we're rooting for you, too. And, and Wes, you have a gang, I understand. Yes. I have in, in the audience my wife and my five children. Five children out of six. The whole line there. That's all yours. <laughs> the whole row. Well, rooting isn't everything. Sometimes you have to name some tunes, and here's where we have to do that. And bid a note, I'm going to read you clues to well-known tunes. You bid against each other as to how few notes it'll take you to name that tune. First player to score three tunes wins bid a note and goes on to the golden medal. It's as simple as that. All right? Here's your first clue. Listen carefully. This four aces tune would be a bullseye for Cupid. And you won the last round, so you go first, Wes. Shirley, I can name that tune in... Six notes. Wes, I can name it in five. Shirley, I can name that tune in four notes. Wes, name that tune. All right, Wes, you're going to get a chance to name that tune. Here's your clue again. This four aces tune would be a bullseye for Cupid. Here are your four notes. Heart of my heart. Yeah, heart of my heart. And you scored it too. One to nothing. Shirley, I'm going to ask you to move back just a little bit and in there so we can hear you. You're such a soft-spoken person. We want to make sure we hear you, okay? All right, here is your next clue. Undersea expert Jacques Cousteau, I'll repeat that. Undersea expert Jacques Cousteau may be acquainted with this tune. And we start the bidding with Shirley. Wes, I can name that tune in six notes. Shirley, I can name that tune in five notes. Wes, I can name it in four. Shirley, I can name it in three. Wes, name that tune. All right, Wes, you got the bidding again. Here's your clue. Undersea expert Jacques Cousteau may be acquainted with this tune. Here are your three notes. I'm forever blowing bubbles. And you scored a tune. That's one way to do it, Shirley.
Price is right. Thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Oh, my, 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 my. Thank you for that wonderful welcome. There's more. There's more. I almost, I almost went on, and then I realized there was more. There was an echo. Here is the first item up for bids, and the price is right. A new off-road bike. The Yamaha RT180, responsive without being overwhelming, one of the best ways to get taken for a ride. The off-road RT series. Some Yamaha, Bob. We want y'all to bid on that in dollars because we round off our retail prices to the nearest dollar. And we want Christina to bid first. Um, $1,200. Her bid is $1,200. Stanley, you're up. $1,200. Jonathan Arim. Come on. Thank you. That was so good. I think I'll go out and come in again. Thank you very much. Here is the first item up for bids, and the price is right. A fabulous trip to Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> we'll fly you and your guests round trip coach from Los Angeles to Phoenix via Southwest Airlines. Experience the convenient flights and friendly service of Southwest Airlines. Upon arrival, you'll enjoy six nights at the Register Resort, nestled in the Scottsdale, Arizona landscape. Features 21 tennis courts and 300 elegantly appointed guest rooms, villas, and suites. Registry resort. Huh? One of you four who bids nearest to the price of that trip without going over will be on your way to Scottsdale. Samuel, what do you bid? $500. $500. Marina. $1,200. Her bid is $1,200. How about it, Jonathan? $1,300. $1,300 brings me to Janet. $1,350. $1,350. And the actual price of the trip is $1,400. You win. Janet, win number one on the Price is Right is to play game number one on the Price is Right today. Right up here beside me, Janet. Now, Janet, I am going to give you a chance to win these prizes sitting over here. A lovely display cap and a new pinball machine. First, this triple-wide two-door display cabinet features lighted interior, glass shelves, mirrored back, beveled and leaded glass, all finished in fruit wood. And second, on guard, attack, slay the dragon with the Swords of Fury pinball machine. Fun and excitement for the whole family. Dennis, you are going to play. Bump. That's the game for you. Now, I want you to know that the price of that cabinet is not $3,203. And the price of the pinball game is not $2,400. If you have the lovely Janice bump the cars this way, you'll put a price of $2,795 on the cabinet and $3,203 on the pinball. On the other hip 
If you have the lovely Diane bump the cars this way, it's $2,400 on the cabinet and $2,795 on the pinball game. Which one of Barker's beauties bumps today? Um, Janice. Janice will bump. All right, wind it up, Janice, and let it go. Boom. $2,795 on the cabinet, $3,203 on the pinball game. Are you a winner? No, you're not. Janice, thank you for playing Bump in the Price We'll play another pricing game for you after this message. Bird's Eye Player All. Rod, will you fetch us another player? I'll do it, Bob. Emma Jean Jet, come on down. You're the next contestant on the Price is Right. <laughs> Emma Jean, you have a very happy look about you. Oh, I'm just as happy as I can be. <laughs> are you? Are you always happy or are yeah. you just happy to be I'm here? I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And I'm going to give you something to bid on. Will you bring that next item up out here, please? Well, it's a new dishwasher. <laughs> Kitchen Age, traditional quality, portable dishwasher, converts to built-in without conversion kits. 16-position upper rack, adjusts for oversized items from Kitchen Age. Emma Jean, will you start the bidding on the dishwasher, please? $595. $595.